Watch this. Welcome to the 208 on this Memorial Day. Brian has the day off. It was a Memorial Day unlike any other that we've seen in our lifetimes. The pandemic putting traditional parades and those large gatherings we see every single year on this last Monday in May on hold, but not the remembrances and the tributes. Much more on that coming up in a moment. But first, the primary election, another May tradition that has been altered because of gathering protocols. And late on Friday, a federal judge ruled that Idaho would again extend the deadline to request a ballot. Our Joe Paris joins us live from the State House in downtown Boise to explain this ruling and what you need to know if you haven't already registered to vote. Joe? Mark, voters need to know they have until tomorrow at 8 p.m. to register to vote. The actual deadline, though, for when your ballot is due, June 2nd, the ruling did not change that. That will stay the same. Today, I spoke with Phil McGrain, the Ada County Clerk, and he told me this entire circumstance, it's been very unique, and all the county clerk's offices have had to work hard to figure it out on the fly. This is the most unique election I've ever experienced, uh, both in terms of how we've been connecting it and now some of the issues we face. We've never seen these before. One of those issues, Idahoans not being able to register for a mail-in ballot online. Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain explains the problem that some faced with the website last week. It was created fairly quickly. Um, it's in our aging system, which is actually in the process of being replaced. And it's my understanding that if they had over 500 or so requests in an hour, the system would time out. It just couldn't handle that volume coming through. And because it was election day and then those final hours, some people were experiencing those disruptions. Governor Little had previously extended the deadline to register and request a ballot when coronavirus concerns first became an issue. Late Friday, a federal judge ruled that because of issues with the website, the deadline to register would again be extended. Judge Windmill decided late Friday evening to extend the deadline for absentee requests for this election. So the new deadline is this Tuesday at 8 p.m. for anybody who wants to request an absentee ballot. If you managed to request last week, your ballot will be at your address soon. Uh, the bulk of them will be those requests that we received on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd last week. We'll be issuing those ballots uh, starting this week. If you register today or tomorrow, here's what you need to know. And for those people who request a ballot this weekend, because the Postal Service isn't operating today, the soonest any ballots will go out are at Tuesday and most likely most of them on Wednesday. So we anticipate in Ada County that many people will receive their ballots on June 1st or maybe June 2nd. The deadline to get your ballot back is June 2nd, so. If a voter doesn't get their ballot till right near the deadline, they need to plan on dropping it off at our, at our drop box or our office on Benjamin Lane. That'll be the most certain way to ensure that their vote is counted. If they toss it in the mail, that's not gonna give enough time for them to get that ballot back. Voters can register online at IdahoVotes.gov or by printing this form off the website and dropping it off at your county clerk's address. This website will even show you where that location is. So again, the final deadline to request a ballot is Tuesday at 8 p.m. McGrain says don't wait until right at the deadline. Definitely don't wait till the final hours. It is possible, according to the Secretary of State's office, there could be similar issues if too many people wait till the last minute. So hopefully people are using this weekend, using the holiday today to get in and get those requests done if they didn't already do so prior to the prior deadline. And if you have any questions about anything we talked about in this story, we have that information for you right now at KTVB.com. Again, the ballots are due on June 2nd. As we talked about, it's a pretty tight turnaround for the clerk's offices. There's already conversations about will that be extended. For now, though, Mark, it has not been extended. It is June 2nd. But as we saw last week with the registration being pushed forward, it took a lawsuit and a federal judge to rule on that. Is that a possibility in the next week? We'll just have to wait and see. Again, though, if any of this confuses you, don't be embarrassed. There's a lot of dates being thrown around. Go to our website, ktvb.com. We have everything you need to know there. Mark? Joe, I've, been, I've lived here for most of my adult life, and, and, and I have to address the anomaly that is this absolute insatiable thirst for voters to get their hands on this absentee ballot. Did Phil McGrain address that? And if all of those people vote, this would be a record-breaking primary year. 
Yeah, the deadline kept getting pushed back, Mark, so there's really been a record amount of time for uh, voters to get their registration in and to get their ballot. If everybody who requested a ballot actually turns it in and votes, it would be the highest voter turnout for a May primary that doesn't involve a governor's race ever. So, Mark, again, you talked about it. We are setting records here every week. It really is an anomaly and incredible. All right, Joe, thanks. Joe Paris reporting live from the State House. Now to Memorial Day. Time for us to reflect and give thanks to those who made the ultimate sacrifice defending our freedom. Typically a day filled with ceremonies to honor those service men and women no longer with us. But with a majority of those events canceled, some are taking it upon themselves to visit the grave sites of Idahoans to give thanks and pay tribute. Even if it's not today, James Earp, the Bureau Chief of the Idaho State Veterans Cemetery in Boise says, everyone should pay a visit at some point, not only to pay their respects, but to learn more about who these servicemen and women were. So when you walk through the grave sites and you see the columbarium niches, notice not only the names and ranks of those forever in their final resting spot, but those who were there and were there for us during their time on earth. There is a standard for all Veterans Administration's furnished headstones or memorial markers. At the top, typically you will see if the family's chosen what they, is an approved emblem of belief. The deceased is memorialized with their full name they also have the information of their military service, such as the branch of service, as well as their highest rank held while they were in that service. Any individual who served active duty during a wartime service period can have that wartime service added to their marker. If they have any awards of valor, such as you know, Bronze Star, Silver Star, Purple Heart, those can be added to the marker as well. And then after that, there are limited spaces available for terms of endearment. How do you capture a lifetime of events, significant actions, things that define an individual in 32 spaces, three lines? This is a way folks are gonna remember their loved ones for generations to come. We see everything from things that are witty to things that are defining attributes of, of an individual. As individuals go through life, they continue to grow in different areas. There are now husbands, mothers, fathers, sons, uncles. We see a lot of memorializing an individual for other areas in their life that they've held there. A lot of reference to camping and fishing here in Idaho. Folks just continue to want to be connected and remembered for their time in their incredible state. Great cook, better fisherman. Don't take wooden nickels. There's some advice for you. It's the personal information that really the family has an opportunity to let us know who this person really was. High school sweethearts forever. And then you look at that and you see their birth years of 1920s. And you can just only imagine that through the ups and downs of life, their service and separation during war. These folks found each other and they continue to share that relationship with each other. One that says wife of 64 years, 70 year journey. One adventure shared 65 years. Soulmates, relationships that span over half a century. Now is a time for folks to really take that moment to reflect on those that paid the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation. It wasn't until 2004 that veterans even had the option to be laid to rest there as Idaho was one of the last states in the country to receive a federally funded veterans cemetery. Every year, over 750 veterans are buried or interred at the Idaho State Veterans Cemetery in Boise. With over 9,000 vets, their spouses, and eligible dependents now buried or interred there. The history of Memorial Day for the nation and, the, and Idaho is coming up tonight on the news at 6. When we come back here on the 208, 
He may have never faced live fire from an enemy, but he served on one of the most prestigious units in our country's military, keeping watch over those who never made it home. But first, remembering the great Idahoans who gave their lives while serving in Afghanistan. It's been guarded 24 hours a day, seven days a week since the year 1937. Since then, thousands of soldiers have walked the mat in front of the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. Now in all that time, only two of those guards have come from the gem state. One of them is Todd Carlson. He's a 1986 grad of Meridian High. He often does talk about his time in the Army's 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the oldest active infantry unit in the military. It's why they call those chosen to watch over the tomb the Old Guard. Todd says he had no intention of even joining the military while in high school, but within 18 months of graduating, he was part of the most elite military unit in the world. In his talk, he tells folks about being on duty for 24-hour shifts, the 21 steps they take in front of the monument as part of their march, the 21 seconds he would stand facing the tomb before turning and walking the other direction, a routine they would repeat sometimes for two hours at a time. The Tomb of the Unknowns holds the remains of one soldier from each of our largest conflicts since 1900. World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Todd spent a year and a half at Arlington watching over the 624 acres of the more than 400,000 deceased military members. He says his favorite time at the cemetery was at night when the cemetery was completely quiet and empty, and it was just him and the unknowns. Todd says he learned a lot as a member of the old guard, but mostly that his duty was bigger than himself. So that probably at a young age at 20, 21 years old, and you figure out, hey, you're, it's not all about you. Yeah, you're a young 21-year-old kid that thinks he's got the world by the tail, but 
you know, it's not about you. That's not why you're here. And it took me a while to figure that out. So on this Memorial Day, we give thanks to those currently serving, to veterans, to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, and to those who are still considered missing in action and have yet to make it home. Before we head to the break, let's take a moment to remember the Idahoans whose lives were lost defending our freedoms in Iraq. During what's known as a morale flight in May of 1945, the Dottie May warplane crashed into an Austrian lake. It's believed to have been the final plane lost during World War II in the European theater. For 60 years, it sat at the bottom of that lake until June of 2005 when the wreckage was pulled from the water. Then in 2008, it was brought here to Caldwell where for five years and about 52,000 man hours, some of the original crew worked alongside a company called Vintage Airframes, eventually restoring the P-47 Thunderbolt to its former glory. And then in 2017, the Dottie Mae was unveiled during the annual Warhawk Roundup event at the Warhawk Air Museum in Nampa. And that's where it took to the skies with its original crew who hadn't seen her since she crashed. Take a look. After spending over 60 years in an Austrian lake, the Dottie May P-47 Thunderbolt was recovered in 2005. As one of World War II's most iconic planes, the recovery of the Dottie May was highly celebrated. After a few years, a California investor decided he wanted to fully restore the plane. So in 2008, he sent it to Vintage Airframes in Caldwell. First steps were actually fixturing the aircraft and uh, 
cleaning it out and it's stripping the systems out of this out of the aircraft. Mike Brashears, owner of Vintage Airframes, says he knew the restoration of the Dottie Mae was going to be a tough project. Uh, every day we would uh, actually take a part off the airplane and uh, restore the part. About 55% of the original plane made it through the entire process. The parts that didn't were recreated from scratch by Mike and his team. And after it was all said and done, 52,000 man hours. It looked good as new. We were proud to dedicate it to the veterans that we still have with us that actually flew the airplane. Veterans that will now get to see the plane for the first time since World War II. Last time I flew it was May 2nd, 1945. Larry Cool was one of the original pilots of the Dottie Mae. They put that drawing on there for me uh, shortly after I was assigned to the airplane. And he got to fly 39 missions inside his signature plane. Well, it was an easy airplane to fly, good wide gear, and it was easy to handle. Lots of uh, memories of uh, uh, hard work. Uh, that was uh, a critical time in World War II. Leonard Hitchman was one of the plane's original armorers. She was a wonderful part of the, the war effort at the time. For Leonard and Larry, the Dottie Mae brings back memories they haven't talked about in years. That, of course, includes the story of how another pilot had the misfortune of losing control and crashing the Dottie Mae. Uh, I asked him what that felt like. And he said, you see that brick wall over there? Run just as fast as you can into it. 72 years later, though, Larry's final memory of the Dottie Mae is about to change. Oh, there's the bird. There it is. Once again new, and once again in the air. The Dottie Mae returns to the hangar, where both young and old learn about the heroes like Larry and Leonard that flew this plane. But Larry says after everything, his story is simple. I was a farm boy in northern Ohio and got lucky to be able to get in the war and get to fly high performance airplanes. Joe Paris, Idaho's News Channel 7. Now, shortly after the story aired back in 2017, Sergeant Leonard Hitchman passed away at the age of 94. So on this Memorial Day, we say thank you, Sergeant Hitchman. We salute you for your service. We're back after this.
Well, we enjoyed bluer skies earlier this morning, but now the high cloud cover has filled in across the area. That's our cue that we're in for a little bit of moisture filling into our atmosphere, and there could even be a quick little spot shower, quick little sprinkle. Right now, we're dry, though. 77, really comfortable outside, and enough of a light breeze a zephyr out there to get old glory waving in the wind now we take a look to our northwest and you see a little bit of shower activity that's moving in from the northwest that'll be mainly for our mountain areas but there is a very slight chance that we do get a quick little shower here in the treasure valley later this evening and overnight tonight future cast shows that potential not a washout just quick, a few raindrops may be enough to count on one hand. It is, again, more likely for the mountain locations, and that continues tomorrow as we see partly cloudy skies across the area and a slight chance for an isolated thunderstorm into tomorrow evening, again, more likely for the mountain locations. Current temperatures, upper 70s, close to 80 degrees. We've got 81 in Ontario. Tomorrow, temperatures should be fairly similar with a little less sunshine. We're talking partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. Central mountains not showing any showers in these icons, but that isn't to say that it's a completely dry day. I wouldn't change any of your plans. It's not a washout by any stretch of the imagination, but there is again that potential that we see a quick time for a few raindrops and then it dries out for the rest of the day. I have a 20% chance in my seven day forecast. Now here's a look at the winds for tomorrow out of the Northwest. It will be just a little bit breezy into the afternoon, but nothing significant. I know a lot of people really want to know about what the wind will be like into the next day. Here's a look at the seven-day forecast. Again, high temperatures, very similar tomorrow to what we experienced today, but then the warm-up really starts for us. High pressure ridge builds in across the area, breaks out the sunshine, and heats up our high temperatures. Could even be some new records in store for us as we get into the weekend. Triple digits, also a possibility, so get ready for sizzling summer heat. You can always find this forecast at ktvb.com, and we'll be right back after a quick break.
Finally, of course, as everyone knows, Memorial Day is not only the start of the summer season, it's also the start of the white shoes, white belt, straw hat season. Of course, a faux pas to anyone uh, be other than between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Now, I do not have the straw hat, but I do have these bad boys, which my wife only lets me break out between Memorial Day and Labor Day. I've got to get my white belt and I've got to find a straw hat because this is the only time of year you can do that. All right, this is the time in the show that Brian usually likes to take viewer comments. We've got one here uh, from a viewer who likes Brian Tylus. And this viewer says, come on, Mark, respect the 208, lose the tie. Well, here's the problem. Brian doesn't do the news at four. So I don't have enough time between the news at four and the news at five to lose the tie. But since I've got a half hour between now and the next time I'm on the air, six o'clock show, there we go. I have lost the tie and now I feel like I'm in the 208. The problem is the 208 is over. I'll see you next in about 30 minutes for the news at six.